Hey, what's up everybody? This is Easy CNC. Today we'll just be doing some helix boring. So let's get started. Okay, first we'll just sketch. Um, make sure we have easy speeds and feeds up. Okay, that looks good. We're just going to sketch a square rectangle. We'll go three by five. Okay. Hit finish sketch. Click on that rectangle. Go to create, go down to extrude. We'll go up about two inches. Okay, so there's a nice 3D solid. Next, we'll click on the top face. Click on the line tool, drag it to a random point on the block. We'll go two inches in. We'll create a circle. 2.3 inches, okay. We'll create another circle. Go 1.2. Make another circle. And then a very sm uh, smaller circle. There we go, go 0.5. Okay, now we're gonna try to helix bore all those. So first we need to extrude them before we can start adding tool paths. So we'll click on all those faces. Go to create, go down to extrude. We'll go minus point, we'll go three quarters down. So 0.75 down. All right. So we got a nice 3D block there. Go down to manufacture. We'll go to setup, new setup. Click on stock box point and click on selected point. And we'll just click on that corner. Next, click on our Z, click on that line right there, click on our X, click on that line, and flip our X. Now our X, Y, and Z are all facing the right direction, and we got ourselves a block. Next, we're going to add some helix bore toolpaths. So go to 2D, click on bore. Now we're going to start with the largest bore. So it's 2.331 inches in diameter. If we want a helix bore, we need a large end mill, otherwise it would just be a pocket. So we'll create a very, very large end mill here. Flat end mill. We'll go 1.25 inch and a quarter. The one inch flute length, three inch body length. Okay. That looks good. Making a nice helix bore in there. Next, speeds and feeds time. We'll pretend it's Inconel. Very strong material. Very hard. So we'll just type in our info for an inch and a quarter end mill. 90 surface feet, tool diameter 1.25 inches, teeth, 5 teeth, feet per tooth. We'll go 4 thou. Type in 20 thou for inch per rev. And the website we use is easyspeedsandfeeds.com. Twenty thou there. Spindle speed, 275 RPM. Okay, now back to fusion. We'll type in our speeds and feeds. Keep this thing going. We'll have to go back there and fix our RPM. But we'll keep going. Click on bore. Click that next circle, 1.2 inches in diameter. And this one, 0 0.839 inches in diameter. We'll try to do them both with a 3 quarter inch end mill. Click on ball end mill, go up to flat end mill. Type in 3 quarters of an inch, so 0 0.75. That looks good. Hit OK. Generate some nice tool paths there. So go back to speeds and feeds, easyspeedsandfeeds.com, and we'll grab some more speeds and feeds for this Inconel block. Got 
cutting feed, 13 thou. That's an inch per ev. Spindle speed, 458, a little bit faster because it's a smaller diameter end mill. Back to Fusion, we'll just type in our, our info from the website. Hit OK. Next, click on bore, click on that smaller hole. Now that 3 quarter inch end mill is too big for that hole. And a half inch end mill would also be too big. So, we have to click on ball end mill, flat end mill, and we'll create a 3 8 end mill. That'll do the job. Hit OK. Click OK again. Back to speedsandfeeds.com. Type in our new info. We'll change that 0.75 end mill to a 0.375 end mill. OK. Change our feet per tooth for that smaller size end mill to 1,003 tenths. OK. Inch per rev, 6,005 tenths. Spindle speed, 917 RPM. That all works. Back to Fusion. Spindle speed 917, cutting feed 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, okay. There we go. We got all of our bore cycles completed. Now we're going to simulate it. We'll turn the stock on. We'll just let it play. So there's our large end mill going, at the, going after that bigger diameter. It's looking good. And imagine if we were just plunging down and just ripping into it, especially on this ink and nail material that would just destroy the end mill. So doing tool paths like this will definitely save your tools if you're looking to do that. Last but not least, that smaller hole. That all looks good. Um, that's our easy little tutorial on how to do Helix Boring in Fusion 360. And uh, I hope you guys found some sort of use out of it. And... Comment what you want to see next and subscribe for more 